Hey, this is Nate from The Bike Company. We want to take a few minutes and kind of go over some of the popular tires that we have on the site and what makes them yeah, you know, the most desirable as well as what type of pairings and what sort of technologies that you're shopping when you're looking at all of these. Um, so to start out with, some of the things we're going to go over are going to be the compounds, the sizes, tread, sidewall technology, some of the stuff that goes into the pairings as far as, you know, your riding terrain, your rider weight style, tire pressure preferences, uh, whether or not you use rim protection. So we're going to try to, you know, have a pretty all-encompassing viewpoint of what you're looking at when you're shopping tires. Now, to start with the obvious, and then we're going to back off of it and actually come back to it a little later, um, tread patterns. Over the last few years, tread patterns have all seemed to kind of converge uh, which is a good thing. There's, you know, that means the technology is narrowing. You're not seeing the uh, extreme. I've got this crazy shape that's gonna make the hugest difference. Um, you're seeing more and more of that in sidewall technology and in uh, rubber compounds, where the technology actually is making large, large jumps, rather than all right, if I have a bear claw shape and then a cupcake shape and then something else, it's going to you know, be the tread pattern of the century. That's not so much the case anymore. So again, we'll come back to tread patterns a little bit later, um, but we're going to start with compounds. One of the things that sets Maxxis apart is their, the compounds that Maxxis has are about the longest lasting on the market, most consistent and the most confident. Now, everybody at the shop buys their own tires we're all going to run Maxxis because they last the longest uh, with the best performance range through their lifespan. So there's some tires out there that are great the first few rides and as soon as you kind of age out that rubber it, they get real slippery. Um, you've got tires that maybe don't work as well if you get a little bit of damp or you know you hit a, a wet rock or something. Maxxis really has it nailed with their tire compounds. So the typical tire compounds that we're working with at this point Dual compound, uh, it's a little harder tire. It's often used as a rear tire. Some riders can use them for front tires. Um, it, it's really a personal preference thing. From there, we see a lot of the 3C Max Terra, which is their slightly harder 3C compound. So the 3C is gonna have a softer sidewall, or uh, sorry, softer cornering lugs as a slightly harder center section for a faster rolling, a little bit more uh, lifespan. In the Max Terra, it's a slightly harder version of that 3C compared to the Max Grip, which is gonna be their stickiest rubber right now. Um, also, along with the stick, it's got the the rubber, this quote unquote soft rubber, let's, let's use that as a word, has more damping. So the Max Grip also offers more damping from the rubber in that squish to control small bump compliance, control impacts off of uh, terrain or rocks. So the Max Grip, popular front tire for aggressive riding. The Max Terra, popular front and rear tire. Um, you know, typically you're gonna pair either same, same, or slightly harder in the rear. Rear tires wear a little faster. If you're going for a gravity weekend or an all-out assault on something, you might go sticky, sticky um, with the Max Grip, Max Grip. Um, but typically, the Max Grip is going to be a front tire. So that kind of goes into the compounds of the Maxxis lineup. Size. On tires, it used to be a little bit more size was equated to efficiency. And there still is that, that crossover point because the more rubber you have, the heavier the tire is going to be, you know, the bigger contact patch, all the things that go into that. But with rims getting wider over the last few years, what we've seen is, uh, again, a convergence kind of between 2.4 and 2.6 um, in the tire, tire width. Now, what that does is that benefits the rim width because if you had a huge gap between your tires, so if you have a front tire at a 2.6 and a rear tire at a 2.2 or a 2.1, the rim is going to take that narrow tire and it's going to stand up the cornering lugs. So you're actually going to lose some cornering capacity. Now, Maxxis has addressed this with the WT, the wide tread that you're going to see on almost all of their, their tires at this point. And again, that's kind of for that 30 mil range rim width in order to keep the cornering lugs at an angle that you're going to have a nice lean angle uh, capacity without sliding past that uh, 
that cornering knob if it's standing too far up. So again, typically two two six to two four is the modern range for that. Uh, as far as the, uh, if you're straight cross country racing, you're gonna be looking a little different, but kind of the trail riding, uh, fun, enduro, all the way into you know the more aggressive gravity stuff, that's the, that's the size range that you're running and that's the reason that you're gonna stay more in the similar width range uh, than previously. You know, when I first started riding, there was a, typically a narrower, substantially narrower rear tire than the front. Really not the case anymore. All right, like we said, we're gonna come back to tread patterns. Well, here we are. The tread patterns have converged to the point where you don't really need to have 25 options that you're looking at. These are the six most popular tires for a huge range of riding. What makes them popular? Again, it, it comes down to they've got the right shape to, to dial you in depending on what you're looking for, but the compounds and the sidewall technology is there to really fine tune it for your specifics. So again, tread patterns, we're not gonna go through 30 tread patterns because there's other options that dial in, but let's take a quick look at, at what goes into these. So you've got lug shape, size, depth, and then the spacing between the lugs. And what you're choosing from is gonna be how deep you want the tire to cut into the ground or to claw into the ground. A shorter lug isn't gonna claw in quite as much, uh, but because it's got less rubber, it's gonna be slightly lighter and it's gonna be slightly faster rolling because it's not chewing in and out, in and out, in and out quite as deep. Uh, the taller lug is going to offer more grip. So, you know, when you chew in, it's gonna stick a little bit better. You're gonna see some tires have come up with, you know, cornering lugs that are slightly taller than the center lug. The aggressor is a good example of that. Uh, popular option for a rear tire, good cornering, fast rolling. You know, it's it's kind of what you're what you're looking at. If we were to go through some of these tires and we looked at, say, the aggressor, this was a game changing rear tire. It features the tall, relatively compact and stout cornering knobs, and it's got shorter, tightly spaced center section for faster rolling speeds and better pedaling personality. The transition area between the center and the cornering knobs features a channel broken up with an occasional lug. So it's able to clear debris. Uh, it might have a little bit of slide until you get over onto the cornering lug, but overall real popular rear tire. The Asagi, the Asagi, and I could be pronouncing that wrong. I've, I've heard it 10 different ways and I probably say it five different ways in this video. Um, but anyway, this, this tire here, it's gonna have stout cornering, pretty stout center section. This is an aggressive tire. It's build as such, it's ridden as such. Uh, one of the things that's really interesting on this tire, if you look at the side, side cornering knobs, they're supported deep down the sidewall. So it's, it's got almost like a big gusset. So when you start to push against that sidewall, pull against the sidewall, there's a lot of support off axis. Um, that's something that I, I, I really noticed when I put all these tires together and was glancing at, well, what are the real differences? Um, that's an interesting one on this particular tire. The dissector, dissector in SoCal is, it's an acquired taste a little bit because of the spacing. And it, it's relatively, it's, a, it's not as tall as some of the other options. So, you know, it, it might lend itself to loam, um, to faster rolling, but unlike the aggressor, this space is going to clear debris, but it's going to take a little bit of the efficiency out of the tire. So, you know, around us locally, popular, popular is a rear tire, although it is an acquired taste. Um, I see a lot of guys who order these from us front, front or front and rear. And, you know, for loamy, fast rolling places where you can get some of the traction out of the dirt, it's a good option. Probably the two most popular tires in the world, the DHF, DHR. Um, they can be used front or rear, either one. You've seen the race teams do both on, on different ones over the years. 
Uh, if you're OCD, kind of like me, more times than not, you're going to run DHF in the front, DHR in the rear. Uh, but I have run both as front and rears uh, combined. And, and, you know, I, they're both pretty good either way. The DHF has got cornering siping, while the DHR has braking siping in the center section. Both have stout side lugs, good grip, and a variety of terrain. Another tire that's coming back into the realm of it, it kind of came out, splashed, and then went away from maybe the, the trail enduro type riding. Probably still not into the enduro riding, but adventure cross country trail riding. This recon tire, um, based on the, the fairly tight spacing, it's got a transition lug, so it's a competent tire, even if you're just sort of leaning in on it. Um, short lugs, so it's fast rolling, doesn't have a ton of rubber on it. This tire is becoming a pretty popular rear tire for a lot of trail riders and a decently popular front rear combination. We're going to go more into combinations a little bit later, um, but kind of the point on the treads you're going to see the differences between these tires and read up on our blog. Our blog goes into it in a little bit more detail. Otherwise this video would be four hours long. Um, but the tread patterns and the pairings, it's really just as important to get the sidewall technology dialed in and the compound. Um, frankly, I would guess that I could ride, and have a good day on just about any combination here if I just you know threw dice against the wall and said that's what I'm gonna go with. Um, the recon for my type of riding, um, a front tire I wouldn't be really confident on this tire but I could ride it as a rear tire. Um, it might not last me all that long. Um, would be the only tire on this table. The dissector might be a little bit kind of more of a slower personality coming back up to speed than maybe I'd be looking for. Um, but any of these four tires, you know, you're, you're, if you got the right sidewall and the right compound, you're in the neighborhood. Um, uh, if I was to narrow it down even a little further, this tire, I would want it as a front tire. I'm not sure as a rear tire, I'd probably be looking at any of the other three. Um, uh, and this tire I wouldn't want as a front tire. So the aggressor, pretty rear based. Asagi is going to be pretty front based for me. Uh, so I guess I just narrowed down my tire choices for you. We'll help you narrow down yours here in a little bit. Um, so again, tread patterns, they've converged. You're looking at the different heights, size and spacing. And from there, you got to look at what type of terrain you're riding and whether you need to dig in to get that traction or whether the dirt has enough traction for you that you're able to run something a little faster rolling. All right, onto sidewall technology. This is really where a lot of your dial-in is gonna take place these days. Um, again, with the convergence of the tread patterns and you know what's come with that, the real secret sauce has been getting the right sidewall for your riding uh, style and terrain. So Maxxis's sidewalls, the skin wall is the lightest. Typically, it's going to be a cross-country tire at this point. Even if you're doing cross-country adventure riding, you're probably looking for more damping and more protection than the skin wall. So we're going to kind of leave that one out. Um, similarly, the DH casing, which is going to be a dual 60 TPI uh, rubber with a butyl insert. If you're gravity-oriented, it's got some application, but for the most part, most riders, if they're looking at that, are also shopping the double down tire, which has got the dual 120 TPI or threads per inch rubber, um, which has been more popular for almost a, a, an awful lot. I, I don't have a number in front of me, but a lot of riders, if you're between the DH and the double down, I'd say almost all are going with the double down. So we're going to put the DH casing kind of to the side as well. So we're going to be looking at the EXO. XO Plus and the Double Down. Now you can read up on the blog about the actual technologies between those. I'm gonna just try to get into the personality so that I don't have a full length feature film about tire selection. XO was kind of the first one to come out in between Skinwall and DH and it was a huge game changer. Both because of the protection that it offered on the sidewall, but mainly 
heavier riders and aggressive riders noticed that they could run that tire at a lower PSI and get the same amount of support and rim protection and they would get better small bump compliance and more control, you know, pounding off of, of rocks or terrain um, because of the lower tire pressure, it conforms a little better and doesn't, you know, bounce off and rebound off quite as hard. So EXO was, was really game changing. From there, tire developers started to notice, well, we're able to get a lot of technology in these sidewalls, which improves the damping, um, again, because rubber is a unique material. So as you get into the heavier, more protective or supportive sidewalls, you're going to see the addition of rubber adds to damping. So a double down tire is going to have better small bump compliance than an exo tire, um, simply because there's more rubber to resist that motion and the rubber is taking that motion, turning it into heat and dissipating it. So that's how damping works in, in your sidewall. Uh, the downside to the double down versus the, the XO is it's going to weigh a bit more because rubber is not light. Um, so you're looking at, at how, how much weight do I want or need to protect my rim, to keep, keep them inflated, to get me in a PSI that I like to run and provide me that grip. Now the extra weight, if you step one or two steps one way or the other, more, probably more like one step. Um, you're probably only really going to notice that weight when you get into full, you know, when you start chugging up the hill, um, that's when you might notice, oh man, it's a little heavier. Um, years ago, bikes were on this race to see who could build the lightest thing, but they got really dainty and they required constant maintenance. Um, and frankly, they started pinging off of everything because they didn't have enough mass to, to conform over it, punch through it or whatever. So rather than seeing who could build the lightest bike, it became, you know, whose bike works better. Um, and then the sidewall technology with the extra wheel weight, um, all the things that would have said, Hey, this isn't a good idea. When you wrote them, it was, Hey, this is a great idea. You're right. It's not a good idea. It's a great idea. Um, that small bump compliance is really goes a long way to adding fun to your bike because it makes it more confident. So if you're, 175 pound rider who's riding really aggressive yeah all these are going to fit in your window um probably going to lean up uh the more aggressive you are the the deeper on the scale uh if you're a 200 pound rider mm, you're fairly aggressive you're probably looking at exo plus and double down um you know and, and if you're a 130 pound rider who's riding mid-level aggression or, or even fairly aggressive, you're probably looking at XO plus uh, as kind of the, the, the cap in the range. Um, again, the factors that you're looking for, the small bump compliance, does the tire and the tire pressure you run keep you off of your rims so that your wheels are gonna last a little bit longer? Um, and is it protective enough for the terrain you're riding so you're not tearing sidewalls out? you know, with sharp rocks or whatever. If you're in a, a terrain that's really hard and aggressive on stuff, yeah, go a little heavier on your tires. You know, I, I'll guarantee you that a little bit more weight isn't going to cost you as much time as a flat. It just, that's how it works. One other thing, I don't have a great example for it in the office, but I'm going to use this board. Tire inserts. Tire inserts... The ones that actually contact your sidewall, so the Cush Cores in particular, Cush Cores XC, uh, it changes the leverage ratio. So you've got two aspects here when you add a, a Cush Core or a Cush Core XC that allow you to run a lighter sidewall tire. Um, one is that it's a physical barrier onto the rim. So rim protection wise, you're not necessarily having to get all of it out of the tire. But also when you flex a sidewall, or anything of leverage when you add that cush core you you're putting a support up the sidewall and that's going to change the leverage ratio it's going to make the that amount of rubber stiffer because it doesn't have the ability to use all of its length to leverage on itself um, so again if you're riding rim protection you're probably able to step down a little bit on sidewall technologies. 
And we're going to go into that a little bit with pairings. It's really a personal, personal feel, um, how you're balancing that out. So again, sidewall technologies, standard, standard ones that are going to be put in front of you. XO, XO plus and double down. XO is going to be the lightest. Double down is going to be, you know, the most aggressive of those three and XO plus sits in the middle. Um, think of it in terms of both the protection that you're looking to have, how it's going to affect the PSI that you're running. And, you know, do you need more small bump compliance? Have you maxed out the small bump compliance on your suspension? And now you're having to look into tire and wheel technology to do that. Um, for me, as an example, with an exo tire, no inserts, I'm going to have to run a higher PSI than an exo plus tire, probably in the range of two to four PSI. Uh, but when we we're talking about the difference between you know, 26 and 30, that's a pretty big jump in our world. The EXO with more pressure is going to have a little bit more skip to it. Um, it's just how it is. So, you know, if you wanted to run a slightly lighter tire and you're going to have to run slightly higher pressure to support that, well, that's the downside is, is can you control that skip? Is there so much of it that it's going to become an issue for you? Um, and are you comfortable, confident with it? The XO plus tire is going to allow you to run down some PSI. It's going to weigh a little bit more. Um, so, you know, when you're climbing or getting on the gas out of the corner, you're going to have to factor that in, but it's going to allow you to run that lower PSI, which is going to give you better grip, um, more conformity over, over terrain. And then the th more rubber that's going to be utilized in the, you know, is going to have the ability to dissipate more heat through motion. So it's going to damp better. Where are you? Where do you want to be? That's, that's kind of the breakdown on that. So in our next section, we're going to go into pairings of tires and we're going to get into both pairing the tread patterns as well as maybe pairing different sidewall technologies and even rim protection to kind of go through what some of the standard typical options are going to be that a lot of riders are going to enjoy in a variety of terrain. All right, pairing wise, tread pattern pairing first. Let's think uh, from an aggressive rider standpoint, you know, you're looking for maximum grip, you know, an attack mode mentality. Um, one of the, the real popular pairings right now that you're going to see on the aggressive bikes is a soggy, a soggy. That tire setup is going to be great for gravity riding. It's going to be confident and aggressive in a variety of terrain. If you're learning different skill sets, having a little bit more tire, it's seldom going to hurt you as far as confidence. Another option, probably the most popular aggressive riding option that there is, is the Asagi front, the Minion DHR2 in the rear, sometimes a DHF in the rear. Um, what that's going to do compared to two of the Asagis, it's going to give you a little faster rolling rear tire, a little bit more acceleration. When you look at that pairing, both are relatively tall as far as the lugs. Spacing's pretty even. What you'll notice is there's a little bit more transition lug in the Asagi than there would be in either the uh, DHR or the DHF. So transition turning, before you get all the way over on the cornering lugs, but you know straight up and down you're on the, the, the center lugs, that in between is called a transition. And if there's a channel, the channel's great for moving debris and clawing in. The channel can create a slide though until you get over onto the cornering lugs. So a lot of riders who are, are learning a new skill set or are developing their riding might be a little tepid to get it all the way over onto the cornering lugs right off the bat. This is going to allow the transition turn to have a more confident feeling of grip. Um, a little bit more than say the, the DHR DHF. If you were going to run the DHR DHF in the rear, having a little bit of slide in the rear is generally more com comfortable for a majority of riders than sliding the both tires at the same time. Um, although, you know, you do get used to it. What 
I would never suggest is to have a tire that's going to slide in the front before the rear. That's that's hard to catch. But you know that rear tire sliding first, you counter steer into it and go. Both tires sliding, you kind of eyeball. All right, where's this going to catch? And then catch the, the the bike when you can. If you fold the front, that's no fun. So I wouldn't necessarily put this tire, the Asagi, as a rear tire to the DHF. Uh, based on that, is it's got a little bit more transition. So a setup that we're seeing more and more, it's not necessarily super popular, but if you're looking for a bit more of a faster rolling rear tire, you could step down into the Aggressor. What makes the Aggressor a faster rear, uh, rear tire than say the DHR? Slightly shorter lugs, notably shorter lugs in the center section, tighter spaced, and that's going to give you a faster rolling setup. So an Asagi with an Aggressor, growing in popularity. You know, for me personally, I don't know that there's a big enough difference between the DHR and the Aggressor paired with this. Um, but it's it's a viable tire. Things that I wouldn't do, I wouldn't do an Asagi with a Recon. Uh, it's just too big of a spread. The Asagi with the Dissector, it's kind of an acquired taste. I've got some clients who really love it. Um, what intrigues me looking at it is the lower dissector lugs seem like they'd be a great rear tire option. Um, but the spacing for our local terrain is going to claw in maybe more than I'm looking for. So, you know, when you look at the stout cornering lugs, but there's a pretty big space between them. Decent space in the center section. Um, again, some people swear by it. Moving into moderately aggressive setups, you're looking for something that's proven, it's balanced, it's popular. Uh, DHF, DHR, or DHF, DHF. Lesser DHR, DHR, that it, it doesn't roll quite as fast in my opinion. Um, these tires pair real well together. Obviously, they were designed to pair rear well, very well together. From there, you could do the DHF and the Aggressor in the rear. Kind of same concept is slightly faster rolling for the Aggressor. Um, these are typically my go-tos locally. During the winter, when the dirt's at its best, I'll usually run an Aggressor in the rear. As the dirt starts to go away and traction becomes more of an issue, you're going to see a DHR on the back of my bike or a DHF, depending on, you know, what we have more stock of and, and what I need to move around. Um, the other popular ones, dissector, dissector for the right terrain is an interesting combo. Again, locally, this spacing makes it a little bit of a slower rolling tire. So it's got to dig in. It's kind of got that vroom, vroom, vroom. Um, but if you're going somewhere with some loam, somewhere where the dirt's going to help support you, those are stout lugs. They're not super tall. So it's it's designed to be a fast tire in the right conditions. It's obviously a race tire. Um, you know, it's proven. So front and rear, I, I could see running this tire. Um, if I was going to run another option outside the box, maybe, Dissector is a rear with a DHR2 in the front. Uh, trying to get, again, if I'm in a situation where this spacing is important, this tire's got a little bit more spacing than the DHF. And then it's got definitely more spacing um, than some of the other tires that you're going to see out here. So kind of a an outside-the-box idea, but you know, for the right terrain, again, if you're in the loam, if you're in something with a lot of support in the dirt, that's a good way to go. Looking at the fastest rolling options here on this table, um, you know, aggressor aggressor seems like it would be a great pairing. Um, the aggressor, though, because of this channel, isn't the most popular front tire. Most riders can deal with the rear end coming free or with both coming free. Um, so on that aspect, I guess both would be coming free if you were running an aggressor and aggressor. But, but a lot of people don't like that front end push. Um, so if you don't like the idea that your front end might have a little bit of push going into a corner, these types of gaps are, are things you may want to avoid. Um, I don't know that there's enough benefit to stay away from, say, a DHF 
uh, in, as a front tire to pair with that. Even in a fast rolling condition, um, you know, I might be looking at the sidewall technology to, to go into that. So we'll touch on that in just a second. But that would be for me is I would have a little bit more transition grab on the front and that would give me some more confidence. The Recon is a fast tire. Um, if you can ride this tire in the right terrain and you're comfortable with it, Recon Recon would be pretty popular. It'd be pretty fast. The downside to it may be the short lugs, although they're well supported on the side, so it's got decent cornering. Um, this paired with an aggressor might seem like an interesting concept, but the, the lug height, the lug height is different, which might create a personality hiccup for, for what you're looking for. And let's say, okay, I'm going to run the aggressor in the front then because it's got a, a bigger lug. I'm going to run the recon in the rear. Well, that's kind of the that worst case scenario we were talking about where this is, the recon's got a, a pretty good transition knob, even with the decent spacing there, versus the aggressor, which has this channel. So this tire is going to want, until you get over on that cornering lug, once you get there, it's got plenty of grip. But until you get there, it, it's going to start to slide. So for less experienced riders, riders looking to improve their riding techniques, it's real hard to to help them make that gap of the tire starting to slide, I need to turn more to get it to bite. Um, once you do, the tire will bite, but that mental, okay, it's sliding, I need to do more of what I think is making it slide, um, that, that mentally can be a, a hurdle to overcome. So those are some ideas as far as pairings. We've also got, like I said, the, the blog is more in depth on this. All right, you've hung in here this far, we appreciate that. Um, so to continue down this rabbit hole, sidewall pairings, we just discussed some of the tread pattern pairings. Sidewall pairings are even more personalized uh, than the tread patterns that you're looking at. So typically, as a rider, you're going to want to look at what skills you're trying to develop, what, sk uh, what techniques you bring to the table that either needed to be compensated for or not. Um, and then look from there in terms of this is what I should be shopping and this is the balance that I'm looking for. So to use myself as an example, um, early in my riding, which is pretty common, you, you tend to find holes while you're, you're trying to learn how to ride. You're pretty abusive on the front tire. The front tire is where you get a lot of confidence from. So I would run downhill front tires with skin wall rear. And man, I felt like a hero with that front tire. Cause you know, you bang off something and it just kind of over the top of it. You go to corner and it's sticky and it would just hold on. And you know, if the rear end slid a little bit, like no big deal. Um, for, for racers, for riders who are looking to improve their confidence, going maybe one step above what you need on the front tire, pretty common, pretty common. Now, as I've got more and more gray hair and I've decided that, you know, I don't like to be crashing ever, um, my riding is has changed a little bit. I've gotten smoother. Uh, all of, through the years, I get faster just because, you know, that doesn't change. You The smooth equals fast. That's a different thing for a different day. But the point is, now, instead of being hard on the front tire, I tend to be real hard on the rear tire. I've really messed up if I'm banging my front tire on something, but the rear tire, you know, maybe you just miss that little bit. You case a little bit, or, you know, you, you got through it on the front with the right line, but you start changing directions a little soon and that rear tire is banging off something. Uh, the way you can look at how hard you are on these, how often do you have to true your wheels? And are you true in one way more than the other? Uh, my front wheels will last ages between trues and like I almost never kill a front rim my rear tire rear wheel uh my rear wheel needs to be trued much more often and I, I will have to replace rims now and then um so for me at this point I've actually got reasons to have more sidewall protection in the rear based on keeping the terrain off my rims um you know not having flats stuff like that so I might go 
lighter in the front and slightly heavier in the rear. Um, or again, with the Cush cores having come out, that Cush Core XC, I decided the Cush Core XC in the back of my bike would give me the rim protection I was looking for. And then I could run a uh, slightly less aggressive sidewall, which you lose a bit of the damping from the sidewall, but you gain a little bit back by the support along the sidewall from the, the Cush Core. So my personal setup, Cush Core XC, XO Plus, the other option on the table would be the Double Down. The Double Down would probably give me a little bit lighter setup and it would probably give me a little bit better damping. Small bump compliance would come up a little bit. But what the XC Cush Core gives me is that bottom line, this is here to protect that rim. The newer rider, the rider looking to progress, the rider who's, who's aggressive to the point that sometimes they're gonna ride over their head. So that's a wide range, right? We've just discussed the guy who's new to the sport all the way to a pro racer who's aggressively attacking it common to see more supportive front tire um, based on weight and ground speed you're going to go up and up and up so you know a pro racer is going to be using a double down tire even though they're light enough that you know you would look at something different but that ground speed is so great that when they hit things it's the equivalent of me hitting it at a third of the speed or whatever because i'm heavier than them um, mass times acceleration so you're going to see racers running heavier front tires because of that ground speed and because of that smash aspect like when when it goes wrong they want to stay on the bike because it's it it's a big thing to come off bikes at those speeds um, they may use a similar tire in the rear as a racer uh, based on the terrain or they may go slightly lighter you know the other side of it you're riding a little smoother smashing rear wheels all the time you might go slightly slightly more robust in the rear there's not so much a weight aspect i can give you like okay at 155 pounds you're doing this at 175 pounds you're doing this 200 pounds you're doing that because the ground speed makes such a big difference on it so if you're tepid and, and kind of just dancing through things as a heavy rider um well that light rider who's going fast, you guys might actually converge on a very similar product and you're looking at it in the parking lot thinking, man, how can you know this Grom be running the same setup I am? Well, because he's smashing things, he's hitting things a little harder, a little faster. You know, As you gain speed and mass, well, you're gonna go heavier and heavier. So really what's important here is a, a generalized understanding of what you are looking for and the ability to ask questions if, you, if you're if you not sure. So, you know, a resource like bikeco.com, our guys are here to help you, and we've ridden all over, everywhere between our staff. It's, it's probably somebody's been there. Um, we can help you determine, hey, this is what I love about my bike, and this is kind of what I'm not so sure about. Where should I head with these choices? Um, and that'll let you fine tune some more on these, these tire concepts. So I hope I haven't given you more questions than answers. And if I have, I hope at least I've given you directions to go with your questions that'll lead to answers. I, I, I recommend, uh, and invite you to check out the blog associated with this video. And hopefully that'll give you even more questions or more answers, depending on how you're looking at it. And if you're in the market for tires, have questions, get in touch with our guys. Our guys are here to help you. Um, we ship tires everywhere all the time. And, you know, we're able to help dial in that right setting for your specifics. So we look forward to working with you and hope you enjoyed this video and there'll be more coming soon from bico.com.